digestive system organs. So the GI tract or the gastrointestinal tract digests and absorbs food. Gastro is for stomach and intestinal is for the intestines. So let's move this out of the way. So the GI tract is everything from where food comes in all through here to me to follow and all the way up here to where you poop it out right here the anus so that was cut off to be like that so anyway all the places that food passes through is called the GI tract and the whole function of the GI tract is to digest food and you absorb it into blood and from there you can move the nutrients that you just digested all over the entire body thank you blood so the the um, organs of the GI tract are the mouth. That's where the food goes in. The pharynx is a fancy name for the throat. And then the esophagus is just this tube. All it does is bring the food down to the stomach. Here's the stomach, and that's where protein digestion starts. And then the small intestine it has a narrow um, diameter, but it's actually very, very long. Do, 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 do. And here's the large intestine, which makes poop. Yay, large intestine. And then there are some other organs, too, that are helpers. So we call these accessory organs sometimes, like when you wear accessories like earrings and necklaces or whatever. Um, so, or an accessory to a crime is someone who, I think, someone who helped the criminal. So anyway, um, these are organs that are helpers. So, for example, the food never actually gets into your salivary glands. Here are your salivary glands. But these salivary glands secrete stuff into the mouth. So the salivary glands secrete fluid, and there's actually an enzyme called salivary, uh, salivary amylase, and that stuff is secreted by the salivary glands that are in these places right into the mouth, and then it starts working there. Here's another um, accessory organ. It's the pancreas, and there's a tube that, secretes, that, that allows the secretions from the pancreas to go right into the small intestine. And the liver also makes stuff that um, you need for digestion. The food never actually gets into the liver. The food never gets into the pancreas. The food never gets into the gallbladder. But all of these things can secrete stuff into the small intestine where their, their secretions are used for digestion. So they're helpers. Sphincter, um, that is just a cool word to know. Um, it means a circular muscle, and it separates each major compartment. So, for example, there's a sphincter between the stomach and the esophagus. And if that's ever weak, acid from the stomach is going to go up like this. So if you've ever, I don't know if you had, um, maybe some of you maybe had a little brother or sister who cried a lot when they were babies. Um, one of the things that happens sometimes is the muscle there is immature and um, it doesn't close completely. So if the baby eats and then lays down, um, it's easy for the, the acid to come up. And when the acid comes up here, that's heartburn and it hurts. It's actually pretty bad for you too if it happens all the time because it starts the the acid in the stomach is not bad in the stomach because there's a thick layer of mucus to protect it but you don't have that thick layer of mucus in the esophagus so you really have no protection there and so if acid does go backwards like that it's a bad thing there is another sphincter here and when that opens so when you swallow the sphincter will open and food will go into the stomach. The same thing. Food stays in the stomach for a while, I don't know, maybe an hour or two, whatever. And then when that sphincter opens, a little bit of it comes out, and a little bit later, the sphincter will open again, and a little bit more will come out. There's a sphincter between the small intestine and the large intestine. Um, by the time it's in your large intestine, it's poop. So you don't want anything going backwards into the small intestine. And there are actually two sphincters at the anus, the internal and the external one. One is involuntary and the other is voluntary. In fact, the external anal sphincter is the only voluntary sphincter. All these other sphincters are um, involuntary. And it's good that that one is voluntary because that lets you hold on until you can get to the bathroom. There's also a sphincter at the end of this tube here. But you just, I just think it's a cool thing to know. And it, it does kind of make sense that the food has to be compartmentalized. The food that's in your stomach really shouldn't come up to your mouth while you lie down. Peristalsis, another um, kind of cool thing. This is a contraction and relaxation of muscles which move in a wave um, down the muscular tube. So here's, let's say, the esophagus, or it could be the small intestine or whatever, and this is the food. And so these muscles, there, there are muscles in this tube that are circular. They go around in a circle. And there are muscles that are longitudinal, which means they follow the length 
of the tube and so the muscles that are circular will contract right here and then look they've relaxed by now but the muscles that were relaxing before are now contracting and that will force this food um, along and so peristalsis really happens through the entire alimentary canal <coughs> sorry through the entire um, GI tract the entire gastrointestinal tract and here's a really cool video that I'll have to show you in class because this doesn't really screen capture very well for me okay quiz time it's just a video on that I got from YouTube on um, peristalsis, so it's not a big deal. Okay, what's the function of the gallbladder, liver, salivary glands, and pancreas? So remember, food doesn't really get into them. They are just helpers. So to mechanically grind food, to release secretions into the GI tract, or to produce feces, um, their job is to just release stuff. So let's be. Put these organs into the right order. Um, and so here are the organs that I want you to put into the right order. Start with mouth, and I want you to pause this and do it yourself. And then when you start it up again, you can see if you got it right. So you start in the mouth. I got that one. And let's see. Where's the pharynx? There it is. So that's the throat. And then the esophagus is next. And then the stomach is next. And then the small intestine. And then lastly, the large intestine. And that is the order. So we're going to look at, let me go backwards, we're going to look at each of these one at a time and what foods they digest and what the foods get broken into. So the mouth, all your mouth, well the mouth does two things. One is that it chews up food which is not a chemical digestion, it's a mechanical digestion. You're just grinding stuff up. Same thing as your blender or your food processor at home. It doesn't have any, um, that means that it's just a, a mechanical thing. There's no chemical digestion. However, um, chemical digestion does work in the mouth too because of the salivary glands. So I'll show you that in a minute. So the function of the mouth, chewing begins the mechanical breakdown of food. The same thing again that your blender would do. And then the second thing are these salivary glands. So you have salivary glands that release saliva into the mouth. And here's the tube, and here's another tube. They produce the enzyme salivary amylase. And notice that it ends with ACE, and so it must be an enzyme. This is a polysaccharide digesting enzyme and they secrete this enzyme right into your mouth. So the spit in your mouth or the saliva in your mouth is from the salivary glands. So that does two things. One is it moistens up the food and another is that it's an enzyme so it's actually starting to break down this polysaccharide. So one thing that you might be getting confused with here is the class of molecules that a polysaccharide is in. Is it a carb, a lipid, a protein, or a nucleic acid? So hopefully saccharide, um, you remember sugar from that? And so this is where carb digestion starts, right in the mouth, carbohydrate. Protein digestion does not start in the mouth. Lipid or fat digestion does not start in the mouth. Nucleic acid digestion doesn't start in the mouth, just carb carbohydrate. So salivary amylase begins the chemical breakdown of carbs in the mouth. So you, you do both. You do mechanical and chemical breakdown. One really um, interesting thing that I can't really do with you in the class because you can't eat anything in my class, if you take a, a cracker, just maybe a, a plain, plain saltine, and you put it in your mouth and you chew and you don't swallow, maybe a little bit gross, but um, if you don't swallow it for a few minutes, the amylase will actually start to work on it and the, the cracker will taste sweet after a while. So that's a fun homework assignment for you. Okay, pharynx is the throat, and the only interesting thing to tell you here is that the food can go down the esophagus, and when you're not swallow, when you're and when you do that, um, there's a flap of there's a fold here that closes this off. Um, but when you're not eating, that fold is open so that you can breathe air, and it goes down to the trachea. So this one goes down to the lungs, and this one is going to go down to the stomach. And so if you ever um, swallowed, like maybe you were laughing or talking when you were eating, 
and maybe you choked. So what happened then is that you were swallowing water. Let's let's say hopefully it was just water, and it came down the wrong tube. Well, here's the wrong tube. It's the trachea. You don't want uh, food going down there. This is the one you can feel if you put your fingers on your neck and kind of rub the very very front. You can feel bumps. That's the trachea. If anyone ever does get something lodged right in here, um, that's what the Heimlich maneuver is for. Very dangerous um, thing to have food right there because then you can't breathe. So the pharynx is the throat. It allows the passage of food and fluids to the esophagus and down to the stomach and air to the trachea and down to the lungs. So if you're not sure about this, you can write lungs because air will go from the trachea to the lungs and the esophagus to the stomach. I am writing too fast. Obviously pause this and keep going. The esophagus is just this tube. Let's get this thing out of the way again. And so you can see the stomach down here. So the esophagus is just the tube that brings food down to the stomach. And now we're on stomach. Yay! So the stomach starts the digestion of proteins. So digest proteins with the enzy enzyme pepsin. So there's good news and bad news. Protein starts with a P and pepsin starts with a P. So yay, That's I guess that's mainly good news. And the bad news is there's something wrong with this name. I've told you that enzymes always end in ACE. I think hopefully I said almost always. So pepsin's um, an exception to the rule. So here's your stomach. It's got muscle in it that can um, move the food. It's more than peristalsis here. It does mixing too. Um, here's the outer membrane and then there's folds in the stomach that can stretch out when you eat too much. Fun fact about protein digestion. I've told you before that when you look in the mirror you're looking at proteins and the products of what some of the proteins have made. Some of the enzymes have put together carbohydrates and lipids. But your body's made mainly out of protein and so one thing that can happen is that because you're digesting protein in here, that's a bit of a problem. You don't want to digest the wall of the stomach itself. So I want you to pause this for a minute and think about what it is that protects the stomach from digesting itself. And so hopefully you've done that and now you're back. So pepsin is secreted in an inactive form so, when, so it won't digest the stomach wall which is made out of protein. So Let's switch colors here. I think I'm having a hard time. Let's see if that works better. So, yep, that's huge though, isn't it? All right, so, yep, I want a pen. No, just kidding. All right, I'm going to pause you for a minute. Hello again, I figured it out. Okay, so, oh, so um, here's the wall of the stomach, and in here, you make this pepsin. And pepsin digests proteins. Sorry, I don't know. I wish that would go away. Okay. So it, this is the thing that digests protein. But this thing's made out of protein, so that's kind of a problem. So you actually don't release it as pepsin, you release it as something called pepsinogen. That will come into the stomach and then there's something, it's actually the acid in the stomach that will um, change this pepsin into an enzyme that can digest proteins. So it's actually called pepsinogen out here. Whoops, I have my finger on the wrong thing here. It's actually called pepsinogen out there and once it's released into the stomach um, the acid will change it into pepsin and pepsin can then go ahead and digest proteins. The reason that the stomach itself is okay once the pepsin is in here and active is because there's a nice thick layer of mucus all along the inside. So pepsin is secreted in an inactive form so it won't digest the stomach wall which is made out of protein. You can see right here this is an ulcer. Um, if you've ever had ulcers they, they kind of hurt. They can get pretty bad. They can bleed. Um, if they tear a hole in here it's very very dangerous. But the reason that these form, um, well, there are bacteria that can actually cause it, but more directly the reason that this is happening is that there's mucus um, not right there, and the pepsin that's in here will actually start digesting a hole. So if, there's, if the mucus layer breaks down, then the pepsin can get right to, um, can get right to the lining of the stomach. 
So pepsin is activated in the lumen or the space of the stomach, so in here, which is protected by a thick layer of mucus. And so all of, I, I'm not going to mention this again through the, through the course of this um, section, but through the entire digestive tract, whenever you, whenever some part of the body makes a protein digesting enzyme, it always secretes it in an inactive form. Then once it gets to a safe place where it can work, there's going to be something that will activate it. And so hydrochloric acid is the thing that activates pepsin in the stomach lumen. And lumen, again, is just the space that's in there. Okay, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to say goodbye, actually.